passionate about vintage and saving money, keep your ears pen back to hear the latest make do and mend tips using potatoes. And if you're looking to hand make gifts for Christmas, then you're in for a treat. Joining us in the studio from Southampton to show us what to do and how it's done is social historian and avid blogger Emma Muscat of Come Step Back in Time. So Emma, welcome, thank you. That's no problem at all. It's lovely to be here again. Um, I'm, I have to apologise for the wilting, uh, wilting sunflowers. They don't like the heat in the, in the studio. But, <clears throat> excuse me, the first um, item we're going to look at today is potatoes and the many uses not just for baking and cooking with them there's many more household tips Christmas time as we're coming up to Christmas sorry to mention that for those who haven't uh, started their Christmas shopping um, flower arrangements of course sometimes at the last minute we don't always have um, you don't always have some oasis to hand so there we go pop into your uh, vegetable rack get yourself a potato slice it in half and you can um, just use that as a, as a sort of substitute um, uh, oasis. And it's very, very, very useful for that. And obviously with an, an arrangement, you would cover the bottom with, with foil and it would be, you know, I mean, uh, this is just as an example, really, just to show, you, to show you what you can do. So that's one, one, um, one option. Brilliant. And other options are, obviously we've got uh, bonfire night coming up and it gets quite cold. Potatoes, historically, have always been used as in, uh, urgent uh, hand warmers. They used to use them in carriages when they were travelling along. They used to put hot potatoes in their pocket. Really? As an emergency, it's a very cheap way to do it. So, if you haven't got any um, or normal hand warmers that you can buy from the shop, your jacket potatoes, wrap them in foil, put them in your coat pockets, and there you go, instant hand Brilliant. warmer. If you've got any rusty garden tools or you've got any rusty items, potatoes are full of starch. And when you cut, obviously, when you cut them um, in half, I mean, these are, these are dried out for the next demonstration because we need the item to be quite dry. There actually is a lot of moisture that, uh, that comes out of them. What you do, rusty items, to clean all that rust off, you just add a little bit of washing up liquid, add a little bit of salt, and then rub with a bit of elbow grease, and it should remove any rust. Whoa. And I'm going to use that, actually, because I'm going to be restoring a lovely old um, pre-war suitcase, and it's got very rusty locks, so I'm going to see whether that is actually a so, success. Okay, so have you tried it before? I have tried it once before with a really, really old rusty trowel that I found in, and it was very good. I mean, you have to work quite hard. You need the salt, because you need some abrasive okay. action on there, a too. A bit of in there, type A little thing. bit of grit. And one other item is when you, with potatoes, um, when you have your Sunday lunch and you boil up a lovely big vat of potatoes, don't throw the water away. If you've got any silver that's tarnishing, drain off, obviously, the, take the potatoes out, leave the hot water with all that sort of slightly scummy, starchy water you, that, that you can see, and pop in your tarnished silver. Go away, have your lunch. By the time you've had your um, trifle, the, the tarnish should have dis disappeared. Wow. That's very good, actually. That is a great little tip. And is that while the potato water is still hot? Or yes, put it hot? in quite hot. Obviously, if you've got really, really, really delicate silver, um, you know, just, just, just be mindful. Don't necessarily put it in boiling water. But, but pretty much straight away, um, most silver is fairly robust. But as I say, don't, don't put a really ancient, antique uh, silver that you think, well, I'm not 100% sure no. about that. Right. Very briefly, we'll have to see what you're doing with the potato. And we'll yes. come back to the other things a bit later. But okay. the, the potato. Right. With the potato. Um, this may take you back a little bit to your school days of doing potato prints, but I actually am hopeless with a knife when it comes to carving. Do you remember you used to have to, to carve the shapes? And it's horrendous to do because potatoes have a lot of moisture in them. So I thought, well, what have I got at home that I could use? Well, I've got lots of biscuit cutters. I also do quite a bit of cake decorating. So I thought to myself, right, OK, let's have a, let's have a go at doing it this way. So what I did... <clears throat> was I took the cutter, this is actually the star cutter, and I just pressed it hard into the potato. You then need to dry off the moisture that comes from the potato because obviously we're going to be popping it in an ink pad in a moment and that ink and water and ink, it's, it's never going to work uh, too well. Um, this is actually what I've done with the, the little, these are for making flowers on the top of uh, cakes. So you just press it in and you can create a rather nice, well, 
it's, I mean, obviously you need to decorate the card properly um, afterwards, but I've just used black for demonstration purposes today. Um, but it's actually a really simple, easy, cheap way of beginning to think about Christmas decorations in terms of packaging. You could also use brown paper. That's fantastic. And do multiples. Thank you very much. That is all we're going to have time for at the moment. We'll come back to that a bit later.